Hey all, Elio with the Oars and Archives here. What if I told you I could predict not only what the next job role would be, but tell you likely what the actual job itself would be? Final Fantasy XIV has had four expansions now, and the cadence of jobs has been pretty consistent. Tank, healer, ranged for Heaven's Word, melee caster for Stormblood, tank ranged for Shadowbringers, and most recently, healer melee for Endwalker. A pretty consistent trend. So, following that relative pattern, we can be pretty sure that one of the next jobs of 7.0 will be a caster and frankly, I'd stake money on it. So what then might that job be? I believe it to be Geomancer. Now, for those of you unaware of what a Geomancer is, allow me to explain. I'm gonna deep dive the lore a little bit because it's really important to understand the what's and why's of Geomancer to understand why it's so likely to come about as a job with 7.0 or at least pretty soon. Just like Eorzea has Thaumaturgy and Conjury, over in the East, Othart has a bunch of its own different types of magic, like Omyojutsu or the Eldritch tribal magics of the Zela. But what we're here for is the Yangshan art of Geomancy. Geomancy is a branch of ethereal manipulation that, like astrologians, draws its power from the stars. However, in this case, it's star singular, so Hydaelyn, the, the star beneath our feet, because in 14, stars are not just the, like, you know, our sun, but literal even planets are called stars. The Geomancer attunes themselves to the etheric flow of air, earth, and water. Why no fire? Well, in some games it has fire, in some others it doesn't, and in this case it just doesn't because, I don't know. Well, Black Mage has got it covered. And they combine elemental energies with the Geomancer's own to produce tangible magics. Just like, you know, White Mage, Black Mage, most of the other spellcasters. I guess Red Mage is a little bit different, but don't mind that. Essentially, they're a spellcaster who manipulates the elements of the land. That, combined with a focus on the creation of barriers for the sealing and banishing of evil, with sprinkles of astrologian, conjurer, thaumaturgy, all wrapped up into one with an Eastern-style bow. With that definition out of the way, this next part dives a bit into their background lore, but bear with me, I'm going somewhere with all of this. Geomancy comes from Yangsha, and historically was a tightly guarded secret for thousands of years, until the rise of Doma whose founder, Ganon, was a famous geomancer. So that caused geomancy not only to rapidly spread within Yangsha, but throughout all of Othard, and especially in Higashi. Geomancy became so important that Ganon even built temples to it. So uh, the dungeon, Swallow's Compass, if you've been through that, that's exactly what that place is. So geomancers pop up in Final Fantasy XIV stories all the time, especially during Stormblood in and around Yangsha and Higashi, and most predominantly in the Astrologian storyline where most of our in-game information comes from, though we do have some passages on them in Encyclopedia Eorzea Volume 2, as well as in the aforementioned Swallow's Compass. So why is all this important, and how does it tie into the Geomancer being the next caster in 7.0? Well, for starters, and this is a gross oversimplification, there are broadly about four main topics for our next full expansion. Going to the New World, going to Maricidia, restoring the 13th slash going to another shard, or doing something else in the Sea of Stars. With the events of Shadowbringers and Endwalker in the rearview mirror, and in light of both literal and thematic statements of some characters during Endwalker, I would bet Gil that our next expansion will be terrestrial, and focus on exploring our own world and its many bounds that we have yet to see. We also don't really have a reason to think that 7.0 will be a massive reduction in scale of content and scope, which means an entire continent is not only on the docket, but a likely situation. If you look at Mericidia or the New World from space, the size of their continents are enormous, especially the New World, which has almost as much landmass as the three great continents themselves. So if we take that into account, means that most likely for 7.0 will either be going to Mericidia or the New World. Beyond that though, is all the seeds that have been laid for our return to Othard. While none of these could probably carry an entire expansion, they will be immensely important in the wake of Endwalker. We can look at Dalmasca or Boja. We can look at Nanksha, a place we haven't been to, but is super important just south of Yangsha. We can think about all the things regarding Evil East, really, tied to Dalmasca. We can also look at the steppe with the mysteries around Azim and Nahama, or the House of the Crooked Coin. And while yes, there's a lot to explore in Ilsebard, so don't get me wrong, that's going to be super important as well. The point here being that we haven't explored nearly all of Othard, compared to something like Eorzea, where we have seen quite a bit, if not all of it. And maybe most importantly, at least for the points I'm making here, we might actually finally really venture into Hingashi proper. During Stormblood, we never get to actually see or experience Hingashi beyond Kugane. 
which, if you don't know, is intentionally disconnected and outside of Hingashima. This is to prevent foreigners from coming in and upsetting the peace. A direct parallel to the real world Edo Japan and the trading city of Dejima. But that's an entire history lesson on its own, we've made a short about that, feel free to check it out. We never see Koshu, the actual main island of Hingashi, or its mountain of Dai Tenzan. And much of the history and culture of the region, despite being clearly laid out as incredibly important to all of geopolitics, is just completely foreign to us. We, we have no idea what's going on in there, other than some entries about it in Encyclopedia Eorzea Volume 2. This is important because Hingashi is one of the largest populations of geomancers on the entire planet. And through the Astrologian story, the geomancer's history and Hingashi's are explicitly tied together. Especially in Kugane. So... One more piece of evidence out of the way. But on top of all that is an old friend who for a brief time returned to us, Gosetsu. Recently having gained new aesthetic arts, while similar to geomancy, they're clearly denoted as different, being referred to as Shugendo. Now Shugendo is a real world idea and concept and art and philosophy, but it's so broad ranging that it's not entirely clear what it's supposed to represent in terms of 14. And since it's so wide-ranging, what actual job it might be tied to is kind of unclear. It's important to note this because since the new powers that Gosetsu seems to have are clearly made out to be ones of healing and defense, it's far more likely to be the groundwork for a future healer, or possibly a side of what the Geomancer might end up as. During the role quest, Gosetsu also makes it clear that he'll return if needed, so it's pretty clear that our days in Othard are not yet finished, and there is a lot of story left to be told there. Speaking on role quests, the other role quests seem to be setting up threads for the future as well. If we look at the dialogue with characters like Lorenz, he refers to seeing us again, but perhaps acting like he wouldn't know us. Well, that sounds an awful lot like he'll be part of the MSQ, and that they don't want to account for people who have or have not done the role quests. If we look at his clothing and his history, having been away on the sea and mysteriously kind of gone for the past decade, it likely implies he's actually been involved with things going on in the New World as well, so, you know, makes sense that he'd be tied to that storyline. Speaking of the New World, the elemental associations with Geomancer and nature attuned to spirituality sound an awful lot like shamanistic practices, and so far our limited experiences with the New World, especially through the Blue Mage shop quest, is one of peoples inspired by Native American tribes of North America, as well as its literal geographic location, which has it sharing an ocean border with Hingashi via the glass ocean. So that's the new world, but in addition to that, what we know of Mericidia ties it to the natural world as well, with literal tree people, giving both places avenues of similar branches of spellcraft and points of contact for, if not geomancy, then something directly akin. So all that's lore, but outside of the in-game reasons, geomancy has been a role in over 10 Final Fantasy games, and more than a few mainline ones and is always a some kind of pseudo damage dealer support class, and not just a pure healer. Most notably for what we're talking about here in Square's other MMO, Final Fantasy XI. In Final Fantasy XI, the Geomancer is a spellcaster that harnesses the power of its magics to damage enemies, and occasionally support allies, using bells or other form of catalyst, cludgel sort of weapons. The bells have a striking resemblance to the geomantic weapons we see in Final Fantasy XIV, resembling bell-like catalysts, as I said before, it has some major appearances in Final Fantasy as well, namely FF3, FF5, and Tactics, all of which have important touchstones in Final Fantasy XIV. Since all these are major inspirations for XIV, we can look at them individually. If we look at XI, well, it's an MMO, and there's just little touches here and there, not to mention a lot of reuse of enemy designs and models. We can also look at things like the Crystal Tower, the music of Eternal Winds, and many other slightly more spoilery things for what ties three to fourteen. If we look at 5, we can look at things like Kryal, Galaf, Exadeth, and a couple other touches. And as for tactics, well, Dev Team 3 has stated on numerous occasions their love for the works of Yasumi Matsuno. We can see that nowhere else than the fact that they've worked with him multiple times to create things like the Ivelisse Raids or Boja. So it's pretty clear how much of tactics DNA runs in the team. So all of those connections help fuel why a Geomancer would be a likely candidate by the team for a new job. So what exactly would a Geomancer in 14 look like though? If we premise it around the using of elemental magics, the one thing we can kind of take for granted, 
Much like how some casters have utility, like Red Mage and Summoner, with their raises and cures, the Geomancer would assume a place as a kind of support caster? Occupying the sort of space as a dancer or bard, but while being a caster. This would give room for Summoners or Red Mage to become sort of full casters, like the Black Mage, giving us two support casters and two damage dealing casters. Which is exactly what happened with the healers during Endwalker in the Barrier True Healer split. Of those two, I think it's more likely the Summoner would lose its support powers, as their heal already feels incredibly vestigial, though I will be sad to see the res go. If we connect to the Geomancer's kind of lore and spiritual history, it's likely that they would have barriers, which they could use on allies, or maybe ways to sabotage and debuff enemies. Its offensive spells would be tied to the elements, predominantly earth, air, and water, all of which have been somewhat lacking in representation, as the elemental skills associated with conjurers have been removed over time, and those were the ones most strongly connected to those elements. Its weapons could be a handbell, talisman, or catalyst, seeing as they've all been represented as weapons used by geomancers throughout their history in Final Fantasy. All of these as options make sense, as they match pretty closely the weapons that the Hingen geomancers use in the Astrologian questline. It's important to note, though, that just because we've seen a prior incarnation of something in Final Fantasy XIV doesn't necessarily mean that's the job we get. We can look to examples like Ranjit and Shadowbringers, who is very, very, very explicitly a sort of predecessor to the Reaper. However, obviously it's not tied to Void Scent, and while his fundamental thing being associated with a scythe and a pact, it's not always a good idea to assume that what we see is exactly what we're going to end up having as a future job. You could also absolutely argue this for what we get with Gosetsu during the role quest, as what we see with Shungendo is, well, if not exactly what we get, might actually be closer to what the reality of what we get even if it's not that, both if it ends up being a healer, or if it's the groundwork for whatever the next job is. So, if we look at a Geomancer's fundamental mechanics, it could be something like building up each element in order to unleash a torrent of elemental attacks. Something like a summoner's ability to swap between summons, or, and a samurai's send gauge. Or if you've played Guild Wars 2, it could be something akin to the Elementalist, where you have a limited number of abilities, but you can swap between their elements in order to attack in different ways. If we look at Final Fantasy XI and its Kolur system, we see the idea of buffing and debuffing ourselves and projecting those effects outwards onto enemies and allies. There's also the system with sort of magical turrets that project out AoEs. Now, in Final Fantasy XI, those have health, which would be very kind of hard to manage and chaotic in Final Fantasy XIV, however, it could still be very interesting. With all of this in mind, to me, it harkens that the Geomancer's time is coming, and sooner rather than later. Assuming what the other role of the two new jobs is, is anyone's guess, assuming there are two and not just one. I would think range DPS to give us four and four of each role, perhaps a chemist where you mix and match potions to lob at your foe. Or maybe we'll see some of the ideas I've said here, but in the guise of the Mystic, which has its own legacy and history throughout Final Fantasy XIV. But that's all speculation for another time. And anyways, the only people who can really say are Dev Team 3. Since it's almost certain we're getting a caster, maybe 7.0 will at least be the day where caster is the poster boy for once. Imagine the Warrior of Light, center stage, wielding the elements of the land on a grand new journey. Well, it's an idea anyways. Thanks for watching. And if you could like, comment, or subscribe, yada yada yada, usual YouTube things, it helps us out here. Looking forward to whatever we get for 6.1, 7.0, and the next 10 years of Final Fantasy XIV. And I'm excited to share it all with you. And with that, have a good one all. See you next time.